Today we're talking resources for family and kids. The conversation. cooking big mm -hmm. so we were there and Rosley my son who's on that show he's a hoot but that that shoot doesn't ever just go like our shoots do mm -hmm. I mean it takes a little bit because you have a six-year-old on the right. set and then yesterday he's, he's pretty much of a natural when it comes on TV oh yeah I mean he's a jokester like I am so I I hope that he, he does well and then yesterday we had our photo shoot for our upcoming summer tour that yeah. we're headed out on which is the Foster Life Summer Tour. You can catch us in your city um, by going to the um, contact us and get information on how we can come. We are doing foster adoption kinship seminars. As well as bio parents. And then we're doing some different ones for bio parents who have kids in care and they can come and uh, be a part. And then in addition to that, we have committed to three fundraisers um, for Foster Life, and that helps us with marketing and also putting money back into foster care for things that you folks need to be successful. So that summer, I mean, it seems weird that we're talking about summer, mm -hmm. but it's coming up and I'm sure we'll be on the road before we know oh, yeah. it. Yeah, 15 it'll come up quick. Cities. It should be good. So, what did you do this weekend besides work a lot? Uh, to be honest, I didn't do much other than that. Oh, good. And you recovered from being in Florida. Yes. Now, this week, Courtney comes back. Yes. So, she'll be we're with us. to have her back. Yeah, she'll be back with us next Monday. Monday, we're not usually on this set. We're on our other set, but uh, Courtney is still in Florida, and then she'll be back. And then this weekend, we got a busy weekend again because we will be at Branson. Right. And uh, that's going to be huge as well, and an opportunity to meet other people. And it is a fundraiser, so come out, be a part, no matter where you live. Branson, Missouri, um, we will be there. Yep, and we'd love to see you. Yeah. So today we're talking about resources. There's a lot of resources um, in foster care. And we want to touch on some of those resources for older kids, younger kids, kids with disabilities, kids with behaviors all kinds of resources that you could tap into and the biggest part of resources for me i i kind of have a lot of pride i guess and so i thought that if we were tapping into resources then we were like kind of stealing from the government and we weren't doing a good job and it's not that at all mm -hmm. I think actually a lot of people think that way. Right. They they pride themselves and like, hey, I can handle this on my own. Right. I don't need this extra help. Right. And 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 I guess we're kind of trained as Americans. Um, a lot. Most people are trained as Americans that you don't want to depend on the government mm -hmm. for help, um, like our welfare system and all of that kind of stuff. And so um, 
I had to kind of put my pride aside and really dive into what those programs were meant for and then learn how to use those programs to benefit my kids mm -hmm. and to benefit our family and to grow. Well, that's the time. only reason why they're there is to benefit you. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you feel like you don't need it, then that's fine, but it's right. definitely there to help you if you need it. Exactly. So we're talking resources today on Foster Life. We'll be back right after this. Real National Emergency is Foster Care. Learn more today. when um, kids come to us we need more than our family to help us out mm -hmm. uh, we need to depend on some of the resources in our community and through the schools and that type of thing yep. and we might as well start with resources whenever they're babies so, yeah uh, one of them that becomes available whenever you adopt or foster a kid would be WIC and that's up until the age of five. Right. And that is a federally funded program. Right. And uh, they'll get you milk, mm -hmm. bread, peanut butter, cereal, cheese, yogurt, formula, baby food, um, all of those types of things that you need. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's not enough for the month, but it sure helps out. Yes. I mean, it gets you quite a bit of bang for your buck. So if you're taking one under five, mm -hmm. the first thing you want to do is probably call and set up an appointment for WIC. Also, the cool thing about WIC is they track like their, um, how their head's growing, their weight, their height, all of that stuff. And they can kind of key you in to some things you might want to talk about with your family doctor mm -hmm. when you get that kid there because they'll kind of review everything and then kind of give you a pre-physical uh, mm -hmm. for the kid. And uh, they have a lot of good information about nutrition and all kinds of things. So WIC is a great program um, to have. Mm -hmm. Also, if you're taking a child in under the age of three in your area and they need physical therapy, occupational therapy, um, speech therapy, uh, play therapy, counseling, that kind of stuff. They can do that in the home. In Missouri, we call it first steps. Um, you can check with your worker. Mm -hmm. Every state should have something like that. They actually come to your home and they provide those services based on an evaluation that they do in the home. And you've been there mm -hmm. when I have workers right. come in because my kids have occupational therapists, speech therapists, physical therapists, because we take in babies that have special needs. Mm -hmm. And so um, you know that my house gets kind of hectic with that, um, but it's a really good service to have. And what I like about it is because I'm a stay at home dad and I have six kids that stay at home um, because I have some older kids that don't go to school. So I have six kids that stay at home. It's nice when they come into the home because I don't have to get everybody dressed, get them packed watching up. all six yeah. of them, yeah. And, and trying to do that as well. And um, the other cool thing about that service is they teach you, the foster parents, the adoptive parents, the kinship parents, how to do these things so that you can help the child in between their um, visits. Mm -hmm. For, you know, well, sometimes it's parents. even hard knowing how to even talk to your child. Right. And that's a great benefit that you can put into your family and into your home that'll help right. you be able to even talk to your child and have a conversation with your child. Mm -hmm. Maybe that therapist is the only person that your child actually opens up to. Right, exactly. And and they also could teach you a lot of different things like with digestive and stuff. When we were new parents, uh, we had a little boy and he was constipated a lot and it was just some mere little exercises doing with him as he was a baby mm -hmm. and um, doing these different things that help that all get adjusted and stuff. And if it wasn't for that worker, we wouldn't have known what to do. I mean, right. we were new to this. And so they have taught me a lot of different things 
Uh, they've taught us about like eye movement mm -hmm. and watching, see if the baby's tracking, rolling over, crawling, climbing. Um, you you wouldn't believe. <laughs> they do this with my kids, but when they start walking, they actually put them on the stairs and tell them to jump off. <laughs> and so they put them like That's two the stairs up and they jump off, but they want them to jump because it helps with balance and yeah. all that kind of stuff. So they do this. Well, you know my one, is pretty wild my four-year-old oh yeah so she leaves the house and he gets on the top stair and thank god was there because he was going to jump down all 12 of them and i was like no 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 no, no. we jump from this one not that one up there yeah. so um but there there it is a really good resource um to have mm -hmm. the other one that's an awesome resource that people don't tap into it ethan and i were the same and, and we're, we're really choosy about who we use, and, and you can be choosy because these are your kids in your home. But when we first started, oh, we won't need respite. So if you're new and you don't know what respite is, respite are families that you can put your, send your kids to so that you can get a break, they can get a break, and then you come back together and hopefully things kind of get back. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. It might be that you're going to go out on town on a romantic weekend and so you want to use respite. It might be that you're having some issues with the child and you feel like the child needs a break and you need a break, so you use respite. It might be that you have a, an emergency, a medical emergency, mm -hmm. and right now... It's best if you're the only one going to this emergency. Right, going to the emergency, or maybe it's you that's having the emergency. Yes, I know that happened with you time. Yeah, and then, so you have to use these respite providers. So respite can be a really good thing. Um, I'm a little choosy who I send my kids to and I wanna kinda know the family a little bit. Yes. Because, like my daughter, um, so she's three. When she was two and a half was the first time she had ever been away from us since she was born. Oh wow. And we sent her to her, social, her old social worker's house because she knew her and she was a big part of our life uh -huh. and then we adopted through, you know, and she was the worker and stuff. So that's where she went is to, and it was, I trusted her so I could relax, mm -hmm. but I always want them to go to some place I trust and I kind of know the people so that I can relax and I can get that we have already got a relationship as well. So, and I know whenever I was a child, I'd always ask, hey, where's my parents at right now? Right. So it's always good to have that relationship so you can tell them, hey, I'm going to be doing this. And right. that way, whenever your kid's asking, where's my dad or where's my mom? Mm -hmm. They actually know where they are and say, well, they're here now, but they'll be back here pretty soon. Right. And our older kids that have behaviors, we have a, um, he's a, a counselor. Mm -hmm and he takes in kids with extremely elevated behaviors and so um he is trained in this and has his degree in this and everything so when we send our older kids there yeah. i feel comfortable because i know that if my kid goes off the deep end and does whatever he's that, more than qualified oh to yeah take care of and he's going to know how to take care of it he worked in a residential facility he does counseling and the judge here in town loves him and they actually send him some of the harder um, kids huh. and so um, we we like having him as our one of our respite providers and, and resources and, and respite is a good resource to use as well we're talking all things resources today we'll be back on foster life
Sunday, Monday. Whew! Soon I miss Courtney being next to us. Oh yeah, because I mean she's normally here on Mondays and we enjoy having her. She's got she's super smart. She's smarter than both of us put together. I, think. Yeah. I wonder if she's even thinking about us on her vacation. Oh, I'm sure she is. <laughs> Let's hope so. How could you not miss us? <laughs> that is true. <laughs> You're right. Oh, we're talking resources today. I want to talk about um, kids that come into your home that have behaviors. And I know, um, you know, some people say, you know, I'm going to give this a try and we're going to make it work. If you're going to take in kids that have elevated behaviors, I personally think the only way it's really going to work is if you tap in to resources. Mm -hmm. Well, so, you've already got stress on you anyway. Right. So why not, I mean, just take these resources in and use them because right. they're available to you. And it puts less stress on you and probably less stress on the kid even. Right. So one thing that you could tap into is um, your local community should have a place that provides services for these kids. Um, here in, in, in Springfield, we call it the Burl Center, and it's the, um, it's the Medical Health Center. They can do lots of different things. So one, um, they can send a mentor to your house. And um, two of my children have had this, um, or my youth have had this, and it's a mentor that comes that uh, works for the facility and um, just talks with them, but also takes them out. Mm -hmm. And so, for instance, um, my 12-year-old uh, had one of these professionals that would come to the house, and they would go talk, and sometimes they'd go to the park, sometimes they'd go get ice cream. Mm -hmm. If he had had extreme behaviors during the week, um, he would talk about that kind of outside of us um, and kind of uh, work with them. Um, he would encourage them when he had good behaviors and they would kind of go do special things. Uh -huh. And so um, that mentoring program is good or big sisters, big brothers, uh, big sisters across the United States is a wonderful uh, thing. Mm -hmm. I have heard about that before. Yeah. yeah. And so kind of getting somebody to give you a break. Mm -hmm. There is also in-house counseling. So, and this is where the counselor actually comes to the house and counsels with them in their home environment. And we have found this really helpful for um, like elementary kids to like upper elementary. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they meet in their room and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I feel like you just, the kid would just feel, oh, this is the place I normally sleep and mm -hmm. relax in. So why not just feel relaxed there? Right, and Actually, they have their toys, they have their mm -hmm. stuff around them. Yeah, if they can play the games that they want to play because mm -hmm. it's already there in their room. I feel like that actually benefit very well. Yep, and sometimes the kids feel more comfortable in their own home, like you mm -hmm. said, and so they're gonna open up about things. And also you can address um, issues that are going on in the home, mm -hmm. and the worker kind of has a better perspective because they're in your home. And right. so they, they see how your house exactly how every day yeah, is set up. Works. Yeah. They see how, um, you know, the routines you follow, all of that kind of stuff as well. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a re really good resource. There's also um, a resource where you can take your kid um, to a center and they're with a bunch of other kids um, that have, um, behaviors and they work on coping skills together so how to cope when they're angry sad upset bothered um, they work on um, interacting and sharing their story mm -hmm. with each other and kind of learning from each other and um, in Springfield they actually do some school work and stuff like that so they kind of help with that yeah. um, I know that uh, program would actually probably be my favorite because I'm I'm the one who sits back and watches and listens to somebody right. before I make my decision. Mm -hmm. So somebody who maybe thinks that way would benefit from that program because they're sitting and saying, having somebody say in front of them, well, whenever this happens, I do this. And they're like, oh, okay, maybe I could take that home and, and right. try that out. So definitely, I would like that program. 
Yeah, and my child is trying to go back to school, and we're not at a place right now where we can just jump into school, but they have this program, and we're hoping to get them enrolled in that, and what it does is kind of put them in a school environment to help them so that they can cope when they go back to a regular classroom and mm -hmm. do things. So that's another really good resource out there. There is your worker that comes. So when your kid becomes, I think it's a teenager, they have a worker that will come and help with, um, say your kid wants to play football uh -huh. and they need to buy this, this, and this. Um, they will actually come, it's a, I think it's called a CASA worker. And so the CASA worker comes to the house uh, the kid states, hey, I want to play football, but I have to have this money in order to do that. Mm -hmm. And the CASA worker will write it all up, go back, and then they will send a check to the school. Or sometimes they send it to us, and then we take it to the school, and it will pay for that. Mm -hmm. And they do that for prom. They do that for uh, sports. They well, do I know that sports for, for sure. Sometimes you're having to buy cleats and... Uh, depending on the sport, maybe some elbow pads or some knee pads. Right. So, and that stuff, I mean, it can be costly. Right. And we've had a really good CASA workers that actually will let our kids go pick out what they want. And then oh, yeah. we tell them how much it is. And then they get us the check so that they don't have to have like a budgeted thing. You know what I mean? Like, uh -huh. oh, you could only get the $19 cleats. Yes. Uh, you, they go pick out which ones they want. That's good. And so that's that's a really good resource to tap into as well. Mm -hmm. um, your licensing, not your licensing worker, but your um, subsidy worker. So the person who decides how much money you get paid on per kid and yes. all of that kind of stuff. Once they're adopted, lean on your subsidy worker. We have had things that come up after the adoption, mm -hmm. behaviors, medical, whatever. And so that subsidy worker is going to help you get approved for whatever it is that you need. So if your child needs to go into like a residential facility to get some long-term help because they're battling depression or something like that, yes. that subsidy worker is going to make sure that you are approved so that you don't get hit with the financial part of it and you're covered. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and making sure that all the um, things are in place. But also that subsidy worker, which is an awesome resource, before my boys came home from residential, because they went through this extensive um, therapy treatment. So before they came home, she hooked me up with resources to prepare for them to come home huh. and to make sure we knew where they could get counseling. We knew how to get them registered for school. We knew how to do this, that, and mm -hmm. the other, and um, kind of go in that direction as well. That's awesome. There's lots of resources out there. When we come back, we're going to talk more about resources you could tap into being a foster, adoptive, or kinship parent, right here. so welcoming there oh yeah um, I forget the name of it it's for I, the I, kids I remember where it is yeah yeah it's called for the kids mm -hmm. and I mean but she does foster adoption mm -hmm. and kinship kinship yep and how many kids how many people live in Aurora 
I want to say there's like around 14,000 people. So there's 14,000 people, and there's one here in Springfield, and we like the Springfield one too, mm -hmm. but it is a quarter of the size, and Springfield has, I forget what the population is here, but no, it's we're big. ginormous. Yeah. <laughs> and so, but she's so big, she don't care where you come from. Because sometimes, like, the, the one here in Springfield, they only serve us so far. Uh -huh. But if she has a foster family, like, I was down there one day before school started, and she had a family that came from Oklahoma. Yeah. And she was like, oh, yeah, you know, and mm -hmm. just She's show me your papers. She's always Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so she'll help any, every community should have something like a closet, a food pantry, whatever. Um, we, what we use it for mainly is school supplies, because that's costly mm -hmm. with 10 kids. Yeah, when you get that huge list of pencils and color right. pencils and books and everything. And then we, we do use it for some clothes, um, and they have a lot of new stuff there too. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes we'll go there um, for clothes, especially beginning of school and the beginning of summer because the wardrobe changes so dramatically yes. and our kids grow so much during the year right. that um, that's a big undertaking that time. And our kids love- Well, especially for you having oh, yeah. 10 kids in the family, mm -hmm. having to find out how to get clothing and. Uh, school supplies for 10 kids that's right that sure would be costly and also too if you're bringing home a kid from residential and they've gotten real big I wouldn't go buy them new clothes that happened with two of my boys this last year one of my boys gained almost 100 pounds in residential 90 some pounds my other boy gained I think 60 pounds mm -hmm. in residential they came home, started playing with their friends, running in the back. I mean, we have a wooded acreage, you know, in the back of our place. Started playing, riding their bike, up and down the stairs, eating right. Playing some basketball. Yeah. I remember some of them going over and playing some basketball. And, and probably 50% of their diet, at least, is vegan. Uh -huh. So they're eating healthy. They're doing basketball. They're doing all this stuff. And they start dropping weight. So if you're taking them out of residential and they gained a lot of weight, I say hit the closets. Um, and the, the, and that's what we did with our kid. And, um, you know, they, they kept saying, oh, well, um, at the facility he was at, oh, we need to go buy him clothes. We need to go buy him clothes. And I, I kept saying, no, we don't want to buy clothes. And we kept getting secondhand clothes. Yeah. Well, thank goodness we did because... He now my 21 year old is wearing the jeans that he was wearing, and he's at an appropriate weight for a 12 year old, and he's wearing those clothes. Well, now it's time to go buy him new clothes because he's back to where he um, needs to yeah. be, and he's grown, and all of that kind of stuff. So um, I use the pantries a lot when they're going through their growth spurts and all of that kind of stuff because. Um, it's changing. Well, sometimes you can time. even get new stuff at uh, a lower cost whenever you go there right. as well. Mm -hmm. so, and like nice. Rosley, we buy him new clothes. But according to WIC, because they can track on their uh -huh. chart, Rosley, they think, will be around seven foot tall. <laughs> so Rosley's already, he's in kindergarten, and he's the height of second and third graders. Well, the pants that we bought him in the summer uh -huh. already... Are that yeah short on the like, They look like all. capris. Yeah. And he, we just bought them last summer. So you can depend on those closets to kind of fill in the gap so that you're not always buying new clothes. And it's right. always fun to get new clothes. Don't get me wrong. I love new clothes and all my kids love new clothes. But I can't, when they're going through a growth spurt, I can't be buying brand new clothes every uh -huh. couple of months. Yeah, maybe just get them like one new shirt and then go to the closet for the rest of it. Right. Or, or a lot of times we buy new clothes for their birthday, Christmas, right. and special holidays like Easter and mm -hmm. those kinds of things. And then in between those gaps, then we fill in with the closet or whatnot. Yeah, that's how my family was. We always bought new stuff like for Christmas, and that was the only time we really got new clothes. And then we got new shoes whenever school started. Right. So we always had those, and then we always would go to outlets or something to buy other clothes. 
Also, you can look for support groups for foster kids in your area. I know that I tap into support groups around the country, not just because of what we do, but I think it's interesting to see what you guys are talking about and see the conversations that you're having. Yes. But there's also support groups within your community where kids can tap in. And sometimes our kids feel most comfortable when they're with kids that have kind of been through the same the same thing mm -hmm. as them and um, they kind of feel like they can put their um, shield just, down yeah just shield down and be normal we talked about this um, when we were we were talking about second class citizens yes. and how they feel like second class citizens one of the ways not to make them feel like second class citizens is when they're with other foster kids yeah. you let them know other kids are going through just the same right. problems that you have been. and and they're with, um, no, nobody's going to look down on them because they are all been through the same thing. Right. And, and it's not their fault that they were taken into care. But we live in a world where we judge and stereotype and that type of thing. And so sometimes that comes across that way. Well, if you get them involved in a support group, fam or group therapy, um, those types of things, they can learn from each other, spend time with each other, talk with each other, and get involved. Um, and you, most communities have some type of uh, support group or places that have um, things for foster families to come right. together. We are talking about resources today on Foster TV. We will be back right after this. want to encourage adopted families and foster parents who are currently adopting. So we'd love to hear your story. Just email us at producer.fostertv at gmail. And we'll get the conversation started. Yes. If you are going through something and you're thinking, I wonder if they have something, talk to your worker because nine times out of ten they'll know something. They're going to have something. Yes. They'll figure out something for you. Mm -hmm. um, rides to um, visits, being picked up, dropped off. Rides to and from school. Um, rides to appointments, you know, whatever the case may be, yes. they can work with you. They can help you find services and resources and don't be afraid to tap into them. Don't be a fool like I was because mm -hmm. I thought that that was, I wasn't being a good foster parent if I was um, tapping into resources. So it was a long time before I would use resources, but I found out. Well, that's why they're made. made. Yeah. I mean, so you can use them. So. Right. Why not? <laughs> exactly. And, and to take those resources and use them to benefit so that your, your children, you want to set them up for the best experience they possibly can have. Yeah, if you're sitting there worrying about, oh, well, where am I going to get formula or whatnot, I mean, that's, that's just more stress on you instead right. of just actually being there with your child as well. Or getting the baby, and I knew nothing about WIC, and we got our first baby, and I went and I saw formula, it was 40 bucks. <laughs> and they were telling me that I was gonna need nine cans of that a month. Yes. And I'm like, oh, man, 40 bucks, and nine of those a month? Oh, that's mm -hmm. a lot of money. Uh, but then we found out about WIC, and then I was like, oh, well they give us nine cans a month. And yes. If we had to buy one can or well, mm -hmm. but one can is better than ten nine, nine to ten of them. Yes, yeah. exactly. Saturday, we are going to be this Saturday in Branson, Missouri. Good old Branson, Missouri. At the Wildwood Indoor Mini Golf. We're going to be doing spring break there. Mm -hmm. We want to meet you. We want to talk to you. We're going to be in our spring clothes, and it's just going to be laid back. You can be a guest on our show, part of our studio audience. Yep. 
And there's gonna be some mini golf there as well. Yeah, we're gonna have some prizes, food. I understand from the owner, some lady has made these amazing homemade cinnamon rolls and donated them to our fundraiser. I don't know if I wanna share those. And they're gonna be there, <laughs> I know. Well, I'm sure they're not vegan, but holy smokes. I'll eat something I, I love okay. cinnamon rolls. <laughs> And so uh, those will be there as well. I think it's going to be a good time. If you are a foster family and you want to attend this event anywhere from the country, it's $5 to get in. All of the proceeds, every single bit of it from 11 o'clock to 4 o'clock in the afternoon comes back to foster care. And uh, we'll be we'll have Mama T there. Rosley will be there from Mama T's Cooking Big. Courtney will be there. Courtney will be there. Tristan and myself. So all the cast members from Foster TV will be there, and uh, we'd love to meet you, take pictures with you, and I'll beat your ass in mini golf. What do you think? You're going to beat me in mini golf? I'll beat all of y'all in mini golf. Right, we'll see. All right. Coming up this summer, it's Foster Life Summer Tour. We want to come to your city. If you'd like to see us and come to your city and do a workshop or seminar, we would love to be a part of your community, and you can just... Click message us and give us the information, and we'll see if we can set that up on our tour. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be fun. 15 oh, cities. I'm excited for it. And we're going to meet all of these foster parents. Mm -hmm. We're going to meet adoptive parents. We're going to meet kinship parents. But one thing that I'm kind of excited about, because you just know how my heart is. Yeah. We get to meet bio parents too. Yeah, I'm we're excited gonna, about that one as well. We're gonna try to do a, a two hour workshop where we can actually give some good information to bio parents and help them get on the right track to getting their kids back for that reunification. And we look forward to doing that out on our tour as well. And we'll also be doing three fundraisers too. Yeah, three fundraisers. One in Nashville, Tennessee, mm -hmm. one in Loveland, Colorado. And then we'll tell you where the next, the, the last one will be soon as we get that information. I'm hoping that it could be maybe in Florida. Yeah, I'd love it in Florida. Oh, my, my best friend's wife does a white party as a fundraiser, uh -huh. and everything is white, and they do limousines, and I mean, it's big dinner I think she has some great we stories dress about up. like a, a big mess or something. I'd love to talk to her. Oh she... yeah, and then you get to walk the red carpet and everything, and it's like a big celebrity event. And so maybe we will get with her and she'll help us out. Let's hope it's not a white room party, though, because I know I'd spill something. In oh, room. yeah, in a white room. Yeah, me and you both. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, it's been good to have you with us on this Monday. On Wednesday, we will be back. But you're not going to want to miss next week. From meth to reunification, bio mom Patty is going to come and tell her story. She worked her butt off. Yeah, it is a great story. To get all three of her kids back, and she's amazing. She's done amazing things. Ugh, I can hardly wait. She's on next week. You will not want to miss it. It's from meth to reunification with Patty. We'll see you on Wednesday right here on Foster Life.